I'm Lauren Ostromovich, the Molecular Spectroscopy Product Specialist here at Shimatsu Scientific Instruments. Thanks for joining me on this FTIR demo video. I'm working with the IR Spirit X, but the product process and the speed is the same for all Shimatsu FTIRs. From powering on the unit to identifying our unknown sample, can it be done in under four minutes? I have a stopwatch here to prove. So let's get started. Three, two, one, go. Start by powering on the unit by pressing the button in the back. I have the Lab Solutions IR launch pad already open, and I'm gonna select Spectrum because I wanna collect entire spectrum to identify our sample. I next need to establish communication between the hardware and the software, and that's done by initializing the unit. It goes through a series of checks to make sure that your spirit is ready to run. Hey everyone, this is Lauren from the future coming to break up the awkward silence and explain the importance of these initialization checks. FTIRs use a Michelson interferometer to create an interferogram, which the Fourier transform converts into a frequency spectrum we're all familiar with. This method exposes the sample to all desired infrared frequencies simultaneously, decreasing analysis time. However, an accurate FT requires an accurate knowledge of the interferometer's optical positions. A reference laser is used to ensure precise and accurate optical alignment of the interferometer by producing a sine wave that the system compares to a stored optimal signal. Once these checks are complete, they will start to pop up in our status window in the white box over there. Right now, we have background sample and monitor all grayed out. Once they turn green, we are ready to run. Future Lauren again, the interferometer's optics are automatically aligned based on the reference laser signal, making the laser stability a critical component to check. These fine adjustments are performed by piezos, which move the optics with tiny voltage-controlled steps. The piezo status is displayed in the window shown here. This pop-up window shows that the smart chip of the ATR is recognized, but I want to set my own parameters, so I'm just going to click OK and set the parameters on this bottom box here. So absorbance is okay. I like that apodization, a number of scans, we'll knock it down to eight, and a resolution of four is pretty standard. I'm gonna select the file name. And I'm ready to run a background. Click background scan and ensure that the sample compartment is ready for analysis. Click okay. And here's a background spectrum of our ATR. Go back to measurement and load your sample. Place it on the ATR, screw down until it clicks and hit sample. And here is our unknown spectrum. In order to identify it, as soon as this is complete, we will search it on the libraries available. Simply select search, select the libraries you wish to search, and we can join them to see that our unknown agrees very well with oxidized polyethylene with a score of 905 out of 1000. Thanks for joining me on this FTIR demo. Looks like we beat our time. If you have any more requests for Shimatsu YouTube videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.